The Dwarves of Durin. Mm, love it. So this comes with a ready to play starting deck. It also comes with 82 cards. So I think it comes with like a sideboard of 32 cards. It sounds like the Dwarf Heroes, Biffer, Ori, and Dane Ironfoot. Additional dwarf themed cards that can be used to augment and customize any deck. Sick. I, I'm pumped. This will be fun. Be interesting to see kind of what route they go. Are they going like dwarf spam? Or are they going more like discard cards? We have an insert. We do have an insert. We'll start with this one that has the heroes. So Dane Ironfoot. Love Dane. Dane's one of my probably one of my top ten favorite character or heroes in the game. Uh, nice to see the noble trait on him. We just opened a couple cards in from the other pack that that can benefit off of that. I I feel like if my life depended on opening these packs under pressure, I would I would not survive. I feel like I feel like I would just I would lose. Like open this pack in five seconds or else, you know, you know, we're we're cutting off your left arm. I, I would no longer have a left arm. I have the hardest time opening these things. Okay, so Dane. Eleven threats. One, two, three. While Dane Ironfoot is ready, dwarf characters get plus one attack, plus one willpower. Really cool. So these are basically the hero packs before they were cool. Uh, this is actually post Marvel champion. So in the re-release of Lord of the Rings, they took a lot of, the, I think a lot of the good cards out of packs that are not as likely to get reprinted and they put them into these starter decks. And so you can buy these starter decks to play and yeah. So I, I think, you know, they kind of took inspiration from Arkham and Marvel where they've built these, um, like playable out of the pack decks and implement it into Lord of the Rings. What I really like about Dane, right? So Dane, all dwarf characters get plus stats and Dane, you know, being a 11 thread hero for that, you really want to just run dwarf swarm. If you run a ton of dwarfs, this is going to augment those stats very, very highly. And then I like running unexpected courage on Dane. So Dane can commit to a quest and then we can use unexpected courage to ready Dane and keep that buff for everything. So we get like a free, uh, a free quest. Um, there's just like a lot of really cool ways to interact, especially because we're running so many dwarves when we are running that dwarf archetype. We're, re we're leading into the dwarf swarm with Ori. Ori is our lore hero in the pack. Eight cost two, two, one, three. If you control at least five dwarf characters, draw one additional resource at the, or, uh, draw one additional card at the beginning of the resource phase. The Lord likes to lean into that card draw, and so being able to draw more cards with more dwarfs is always a good time. You're probably, if you're running Ori, you're probably starting with minimum three. Yeah, yeah. So these are these are these are new product with old cards, <laughs> repackaged. You're probably starting with three, and you'll probably be able to drop your your fourth and fifth dwarf pretty pretty quickly so ori is going to start drawing more and more cards and that does a combo with biffer oh interesting okay so we're going dual sphere here so biffer i actually don't love biffer i'm not a huge i'm not the biggest biffer fan seven cost uh two one two three pay one resource from a resource pool to add one resource to biffer's resource pool any player can trigger the ability um but it is nice if we're going with a buy sphere deck we're going to be able to ramp into that fifth dwarf a lot quicker Dane really warped the game around himself when he first came out yeah i bet yeah he just like i mean he's just so solid with uh with being able to and all of these costs remember dane gives plus one so while dane is ready these become a three three one and a three two two so the the stats are much much better when you have dane on the table I like the I like the lineup. I like the lineup. Um yeah. Good stuff. We do have dwarves in the starter or in the core set. So we could we could augment this with tactics. I think that's where most of the dwarfs come from in the starter. So that's cool. We got bomber. One set looks like one copy of bomber. Three cost. A zero zero one three, which when Dane's ready, one 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 three. Exhaust Bomber to choose a location. The location gets minus one threat until the end of the phase. If that location does not contribute, it fits an underground location. Nice. 
Biffer is a great as a lore splash. Only seven threat, two willpower, and built-in resource smoothing. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, if you if you want to run, yeah, that that's a good point. Yeah, seven cost heroes are great. We got Dory. Looks like we got two copies of Dory here. Dory is a three two one three. After your heroes assign any amount of damage, exhaust Dory to place that damage on Dory instead. I don't normally find myself using Dory. Dory is another card that I have in the in the other openings, but I find myself usually questing or attacking with Dory. Dory, because like with Dane being ready, he's got a two three stat line, which is nice. Got the Hammersmith. I believe this is a core set card. Two cost one 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 three. After you play the Hammersmith, return the topmost attachment from any player's discard pile to their hand. Good stuff. Nice stat boost. And then dwarves have a lot of fun attachments that they want to be playing. Got the record keeper. I do like the record keeper a lot. It's a one cost, one willpower. Cannot attack or defend. We can exhaust and pay a lore resource to choose and ready a dwarf character. So that could be. Who, whatever and whoever you want you could also just quest he can't attack or defend but he can quest you can quest with ebor the record keeper with a two if you have dane or you can use him later to spend a lore resource which we're going to be doubling up on in a solo solo game here we're going to be doubling up on the lore resources here to ready dane to turn that uh that stat boost back on i, I like it i like the record keeper oh this is a new card for me the new card three cost one one two or one 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 two after you play the arid luin miner after it's discarded from your deck put it into play under your control okay this is white fox this is this is a uh, this is really important for the dwarf archetype dwarf the other kind of half of the dwarf archetype is discarding cards from your deck and you have cards which i assume we'll see in this deck that benefit like hidden cash and everything but being able to get just straight up White Fox's stat line from champions onto the table. Yeah, that that's that's pretty great. That's that's pretty great. Free allies are always fun, especially with Dane. We got the Prospector. 21012. After he enters play, discard the top three cards of your deck, then choose and shuffle one card from your discard pile back into your deck. Nice little combo here. You discard the miner. Put it into play. Shuffle a card back in. Dwarves mind the deck. Such good theming. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I ever connected that in my head as like a theming. That's cool. We got Gandalf. Big fan of Gandalf. Gandalf is good. We got Galoin. Uh, three cost. Two, one, one, three. While you control at least five dwarf characters. He gains after you play him from your hand. Choose a hero. Add two resources to that hero resource pool. Amazing. Turns into a one cost hero. And like you get you get five resources really quick. Or five dwarves really quick, especially with the miners. Like you could hit it turn one, right? If you if you get lucky and you play the prospector because you have two resources from your your spirit stuff here. You discard the miner, now you have five dwarfs on the table and everything starts to starts to synergize. That's sick. We got the Longbeard Elder. I like Longbeard a lot. Three cost. Two willpower, one, one, two. After he commits to a quest, look at the top card of the encounter deck. If it's a location, place one progress on the current quest. Otherwise, he gets minus one threat until the end of the phase. I run Longbeard a lot, especially with Dane. Longbeard pumping up to three willpower, dropping down to two if it's not a location. But if it is a location, it is like, it's slightly better than, you know, a four willpower. So it's, it's Longbeard and Dane are good friends. Longbeard and Dane are good friends. It is, it's looking a little expensive so far with our leadership stuff with Dane, right? Like we only have one, but I'm, I'm wondering if we'll get some some more stuff. We got Miner of the Iron Hills. This is the core set card, 20112. Discard a condition after they enter play. Nice stuff. Easily hit that five dwarf. Cram, discard Cram to ready the attached hero. Nice. Turn Dane back on. Get all your bonuses there. I like that. Healing herbs. Two costs of these. Attached to a lore hero. Discard it to exhaust the attached hero to heal all damage on one character. What I like there is that it's not... It's not 
exactly just the character it's attached to. So that's nice. We got King Under the Mountain. We got three copies of King Under the Mountain. This is this is a really, really good card for a dwarf. So you attach it to the dwarf, exhaust it, look at the top two cards of your deck, add one to your hand and discard the other. This this is such such a good card. Because what we do here is if we see the miner, we draw the other one, discard miner, put miner directly into play. It also just like being able to see two cards and draw one of those cards is very, very good. Yeah, I mean, just being able to find that the situational card that you need. King Under the Mountain, I'm really glad that we're seeing three copies in here because this is something that you're going to want to get turned to onto the, get turned to onto the table if you can. Legacy of Durin, also a great card. Attached to a dwarf hero. After you play a dwarf character from your hand, exhaust Legacy of Durin to draw a card. Love it. And we got Narvi's Belt. This is a good deck. This is a good deck. This is a really good deck. Legacy of Durin, card draw. You're already getting a lot of card draw with Ori. And we got Narvi's Belt here. Love Narvi's Belt. Two cost. Uh, exhaust Narvi's Belt to give the attached hero a resource icon until the end of the phase. I, I got tripped up a little bit when I first started playing with Narvi's Belt. It's until the end of the phase, not until the end of the round. And so you don't get that, uh, that resource icon all the time. So if you need to play an event, maybe, maybe you're trying to pop an event here at some point um in like the quest phase you need to hang on and not exhaust narvi's until the end of that quest phase but or until the quest phase because it's only until the end of the phase but really most likely what we're doing is using that in the planning phase and with this deck i could see us i guess like this is this may be the entire deck actually we may we may have a couple of cards in here that are not a part of the deck but i i could see us i could i could see us throwing this on on Dane to smooth into lore or on one of the lores to smooth into Dane's into the leadership. I was worried the King on the Mountain and Narvi's Belt weren't included. Oh yeah. No, these yeah, these these are very, very solid cards. We got our map attached to a hero. We can discard the map to choose a location in the staging area. Make that location the active location. So that's really nice to bypass some travel effects. So you're not traveling to the location, you're making it the active location. And so if you want to, like that one card travel, when you that we just saw in our last quest that we were playing, travel, deal four damage to each ship. If you use our map, you know where you're going. You don't have to take that travel, that travel impact, and you just you just make it the active location. Nice. We've got a very good tail, which is a very good card. Josh. Josh has shown me the ways on this card. He's convinced me. But we got a very good tail. Exhaust two allies you control to shuffle your deck and discard the top five cards. Put up the two allies discarded by this effect into play under your control. The total cost of those allies cannot exceed the total cost of allies exhausted to pay for this effect. We got two of these. Dwarves want to swarm, right? So if we exhaust a bomber and a dory, we can put two allies into play that don't exceed six. Or, and I think this works. I think the timing on this works because Gandalf gets discarded at the end of the round. There is a refresh the 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 uh the during the refresh phase, you unexhaust all of your characters and there's an action after that unexhaust fate or that unexhaust step. And so you can play a very good tail to exhaust Gandalf before he gets discarded and use him as one of your exhausted characters and then you're adding a 5 to the mix. I'm pretty sure that works. Yeah, because you can use, like, Moment of Peace after you're ready to exhaust again. I don't know if they're... It also discards, so you can get the Arid Luin Miners as well as the other two. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I didn't... Oh, yeah, that's a fun little combo. Yes. Yeah, so if you discard the Miners, you get to put them into play. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's really, really fun. I like that a lot. That's fun. Oh, here's the here's the other half of the uh, the equation, the hidden cache. After this discarded from your deck, add two resources to the resource pool of a hero you control. Spin a resource to draw a card as an action. We're probably not really using that too too much. What we want to do is discard this card from the top of our deck, which we can do with a very good tail, which we can do with all of our prospectors. Yeah, pretty much a staple dwarf card in your in your opinion, along with a very good tail. To me, my kinsfolk, and we are not idle. I don't think I know. To me, my kinsfolk, we are not idle, but 
Yeah. No, this is this is a really well put together deck. When they when they designed this deck, this is a very, very functional deck right out of the box. Very much. Lure of Moria. Let's ready all those dwarf characters for three cost. You got Yeah. <laughs> so you quest crazy hard with Dane. You ready everybody and you attack really hard. Remember, we're just throwing as many allies onto the table as possible. And so being able to ready all the dwarf characters, including your three heroes. Yeah, that that'll do. That'll do. Kind of expensive at three. The the leadership curve in this deck is pretty high. Right? Three, three, two, two, three. So I think Nardi's Bell probably goes on Biffer at Ori and you you flex into leadership. I guess like I haven't seen all the cards, so may maybe not exactly what <laughs> uh what the, the play is, but at this point that's kind of how I'm seeing the deck play out. We are not idle. Action exhaust X dwarf heroes to add X resources to a resource pool and draw a card. Okay, well that kind of fixes that kind of fixes some of the ramp that I was talking about. Because if you combine this, right? We are not idle. You can exhaust however many. Oh, it's heroes. So you could exhaust the three. And then uh, add three to Dane. Which then could pay for lure. But So, like, it pays for itself. But not necessarily the... Uh, um, <laughs> not necessarily the best way to do it. But you can exhaust the dwarf hero set X resources. That does help with the smoothing. Nice. Nice. This card used to be characters, but is a rod as the heroes. That's fair. That's fair. I was going to say, you could just exhaust, like, <laughs> you would have so many resources. <laughs> oh, Durin Song. Yes, I love Durin Song. One cost, uh, choose a dwarf hero. They get plus two, plus two, plus two until the end of the round. Halt. Well, there you go. That tells you what the deck, deck end is. So Durin Song is nice here because you can choose let's say ori right you're getting plus two to all their stats until the end of the round and then we're going to be using if you wanted to augment the deck or if you have a maybe a good friend that's running unexpected courage and can drop it on ori and now we're getting multiple activations out of ori then you're going to be here with the record keeper being able to exhaust record keeper to ready ori and get just multiple multiple things out of Durin song then you combine it with lure moria you get to ready cool this is solid complement cards for sure. Definitely uh, worth its asking price because in Bummer, we are not idle. Uh, I played it when I was characters. Now it loses a lot of its value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is a very solid deck. We also have like 32 more cards to go through. Oh, okay, we got some more heroes too. Oh, and we got the Splash 4 blue. We'll, we'll definitely go through this. Um, but this is the pre-built starter. I'm, I'm really happy with the starter. I think that this is a very functional starter deck. Uh, yeah. The deck also has cram, so you don't need to unexpected courage to benefit from Durin Song. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, I miss. Yeah, cram. You can discard it to ready a hero. You can have some incredible turns, like dwarfs build up, build up, build up, AD carry all the way to the victory. Good stuff. Good stuff. Very happy with this. Very very happy with this. Let's look at the spirit or all the rest of the cards. These cards are marked. Oh, they even mark it with a star, which. Ironically, kind of looks like a uh, the spirit star. These cards are marked with a spirit in the lower right corner. I totally... I'm, I'm not seeing the star. I'm not going to lie. Um, these pre-built featuring dwarves. These cards are marked with a star in the lower right corner. There's also a deck list for pre-built dwarves on the back of this rules insert. I don't see the star. I I don't see the star at all. So I'm missing that. But the remaining cards are not a part of the pre-built starter deck. They can be cards when used to customize or building your own player decks. The rules for deck building can be found in the rules reference. Yeah, I'm totally missing the star. Oh, well. I wonder how the Rohan and Elves themed decks compare, because this one is pretty good so far. I've heard I've heard good. Oh, Ebor Hammersmith can grab Cram. Yeah, that's cool. I never thought about that. That's fun. Okay, so we're splashing. I like Nori. I like Nori over Biffer. Um, 
when I'm building decks, I typically go into that Trisphere realm, and Nori, Nori just works so well. So he's a 9 cost, 2, 1, 2, 4. And after you play a dwarf character from your hand, reduce your threat by 1. Incredible. And that adds up so fast. So, so fast. Like, incredibly quick. Because you're playing so many dwarfs. It is from your hand. So, like, the miners don't trigger it. But, like, you can play a lot of cards from your hand. And just start reducing that threat like crazy. Hey, we got Killy. Yes. <laughs> How funny would it be if they added Killy but not Philly? So, we got Killy. After you play Killy from your hand during the planning phase, search your deck for Philly and put him into play under your control. Shuffle your deck. Three cost one, 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 two. What I like about this... Okay, cool. They, they did add Philly, but... Philly is the same, but in leadership. And whenever you play Philly, you go search your deck for Killy. What I like about this is it adds to the number of dwarfs that you're going to get, plus their two two ones with Dane on the table. So I'm typically running these with Danes. Worst case scenario, three cost for two blockers. Not the end of the world. Epic troll move. Have a bunch of new gamers asking FFG, where's Killy? <laughs> Right? Yes. I really like these two. They also get you to that five dwarf characters very, very quickly. Good stuff. I'm, I'm really happy with these products so far. We got the miner. Which is good because I've lost all my miners. I have no idea where my miners went. Like in, in my, my normal miners, no idea where they went. So two costs, one, 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 one. Exhaust the miner. Name a number. To discard the top two cards of your deck. If at least one of those cards cost, uh, has a cost equal to the name number, choose a hero you control. For each card that matches the name number, add one resource to that hero's resource pool. What's what I like about the miners is it you can get the get these miners. You can get hidden cash. You can get a lot of money uh, from the miners. I really like playing it with the Gandalf hero. I'm not going to talk too, too much about the Gandalf hero just because I'm not sure where it is in the repackage. If you're watching uh, me open this on YouTube, I don't want to spoil anything you haven't seen. But Sagal Miner with Gandalf is a good good time. Hey, we got the UR Guard. This is a new card for me. Four cost zero, one, two, three, Sentinel meaning you can defend for other players. When you play Ebor Guard from your hand, discard the top two cards of your deck to reduce its cost by two. That's that's nice. That's really nice. Especially if you can get like some synergy with some of the discard cards. Yeah. Two costs for a 2-3. Or like a, a defensive stat line of 2-3. Yeah, that's nice. That's really nice. Dwarf Pipe is another new card for me. Dwarf Pipe is a one cost pipe attached to a dwarf character. After a card is discarded from your deck, exhaust Dwarf Pipe to place that card on the bottom of your deck. Oh, interesting. Nice. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. On the bottom of your deck is a little hard, but it isn't it is in lore. We're gonna we're just gonna start getting creative over where these cards are gonna go. It is in lore or it's in spirit. And so you can That's interesting. I guess like you can start stacking, so if you do deck out, if you're running Will of the West from the core set, you can shuffle your uh discard pile back into your deck and so if you use this and you start stacking like all your hidden caches on the bottom of your deck you know exactly what they are for the miners and you just get a ton of resources which leads you right into lures endurance songs and just push and then you can will of the west everything back Ooh, magic ring this is a new card for me magic ring is a two cost uh spheres attachment attached to a hero Limit one per hero and limit one per deck. Interesting. Okay, so we can exhaust magic ring to raise your threat by one to either heal one damage from the attached hero, add one resource to the attached hero's pool, or ready the attached hero. That's good. That's really cool. Okay, so you're raising your threat by one. I would I would trade one threat for one money every single day of the week. I would trade one threat for a ready every single day of the week, especially if you're running Nori or you're running Gladium Greeting. You're running anything that reduces threat. Yeah, Magic Ring seems pretty awesome. Big fan of that. You can discard to your heart's content with all of your dwarf cards, knowing that if you ever grab Ebor Hammersmith, you can just pull it right back to your hand. That's nice. Once you have all the dwarf cards, you will almost certainly deck out. Dwarf Pipe keeps your deck alive and can recur hidden cash. Yeah, nice. That's fun. That's that's really fun. That's true. Yeah, you're 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 burning through the deck real quick. 
Hey, we got Bomber. Bomber is a lore. Uh, three costs, zero, zero, one. Oh, okay. So that, okay. I, I'm really happy with the, what they're doing here. So we have Bomber in the starter deck, but this is a full playset of Bomber. So while Bomber is in the deck, they give you the two cards. I was like, I was a little, and it looks like, yeah, it looks like the rest of these cards are just adding so that you have three copies of every single card in the starter deck. That's a really good move. I'm very, very happy that they did that. So every single card that we have in this pack, you get a full play set of that card. That's amazing. I'm very happy that FFG did that. That's that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Um, nice. Excellent product. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll unbox some more of the stuff later, but like if all of the products are at this level of quality, I I'm. This is a great pickup. This is a great pickup. I I. Yeah. Very very good stuff. Sweet awesome. Thank you so very much for hanging out. Yeah, that is really smart. That is really smart. I was like, it it it's kind of annoying that we only get one copy of bomber one co or two copies of dory it's like i would really you know sometimes i really like running three copies of narvi's belt because i really want to get that in my opening hand with the mulligan that i really want to run three boom there you go there's your third copy they get three copies of magic ring no because the play set of magic ring is only one so uh because you can only include one copy in your deck and so they give you a maximum playset. So if you can only have one card, uh, one of a card, then that's the only one that they're going to give you. The interesting thing is that Magic Ring is not unique. So you can have four players all running Magic Rings, which is pretty fun. The Adventure Pack gives three Magic Rings for multiple characters. Oh, interesting. Huh. Well, there you go. <laughs> nice. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much for hanging out. I appreciate you all. I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, same time, same place. So 10 a.m. Eastern time to play some Marvel Champions. We're going to finish up our uh, play of the Astro Dars, the Alter Ego Chronicles Challenge. No. Uh, so like that, that whole like no, um, no ally challenge. And so we're going to finish that up tomorrow. So if you're interested in Marvel Champions... I will see you then. If not, then I'm actually not streaming next week. So I will, I'll be off next week, but we'll be playing some Lord of the Rings when we come back the following week. I appreciate each and every single one of y'all and I'll see you around. Peace.